You may know me by the name Pontius Pilate. I was the governor at the time of Jesus' crucifixion. That morning, the chief priest came to me, alleging Jesus had committed crimes worthy of death. But after examining their accusations and examining Jesus himself, I found no evidence against him that would indicate he had contributed or committed any crimes whatsoever. I was happy to release him, but the religious leaders would not have it. Then I learned that Jesus was a Galilean and under Herod's jurisdiction. I sent him to Herod, who happened to be in Jerusalem at the time. Herod was quite pleased when he saw Jesus. He had heard about him and had been wanting to see him. From what he had heard about him, he hoped to see Jesus perform some miracle. Herod plied him with many questions, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the teachers of the law were standing there vehemently accusing him. Then Herod and his soldiers ridiculed and mocked him. They dressed him in an elegant robe and sent him back to me. So I called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people and said, you brought to me this man as someone who was inciting to rebellion. I've examined him in your presence and have found no basis for any charges against him. Neither has Herod. He sent him back to us. So as you can see, he has done nothing to deserve death. Therefore, I will punish him and release him. I would have released Jesus, but the religious leaders demanded that he be crucified. My wife even sent me a message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man. I've had nightmares about him. And you know, the more I tried to convince them otherwise, the more determined they were in their request. I reminded them that the custom during the Passover was to release a prisoner. They yelled, give us Barabbas, a hardened criminal. I, I just could not understand that. So finally, hoping to satisfy the crowd, I had Jesus beaten. Surely that would satisfy them. But when he came back to me beaten and, bat and battered and bloodied, the chief priest had gathered even more people. Crucify him! Crucify him! I had nothing at all against Jesus myself, but I knew that as governor, I had to satisfy the desire of the people to avoid a riot. So right there before all of them, I washed my hands as a sign of innocence. Although my hands may be clean, my heart was dirty. There was one innocent man that day and it was Jesus. I was there. I was one of the Roman soldiers who was told to guard this man named Jesus. I had seen Jesus on the streets on a few occasions. He was a teacher of sorts, not much of a real man in my eyes. Some of the other soldiers were bored, so to have some fun, they took Jesus down to the fortress and stripped his clothes off. They put a scarlet robe on him and a crown of thorns. And they all knelt down and started hollering and shouting, All hail to the King of Jews! All hail to the King of Jews! They all laughed. I felt left out. I wasn't 
usually invited. You see, I wasn't much of a soldier in their eyes. I had been looking for a, the right opportunity to earn their respect and become one of the guys. How else could I humiliate this guy named Jesus to the good pleasure of my fellow soldiers and become one among them? I had it. I would spit on him. Spitting doesn't hurt the body, but it degrades the soul. So I was the first, and everyone else followed suit. I felt so big by making Jesus feel so small. Jesus never wiped his face. Then, as, I, as he looked me square in the eyes, with love and compassion, I felt a chill over me. You see, I had reacted with hate and pride, and he had responded in love. I was there. I was one of the Jewish women who had followed Jesus for months. I did what I could to help him along the way as he told of the kingdom of heaven. He called it the good news of salvation. He taught much about love, forgiveness, and hope. But that day was not a good day for Jesus or for the ones who loved him. I saw Jesus with the crown of thorns pressed on his head. His face was wet with spit and stained by his own blood. And when Jesus could no longer carry his cross, a man helped him carry it to the hill. Nails were pounded into his hands and feet. But Jesus did not struggle with the soldiers. It was as if he knew that there was a purpose for what was taking place. It was very painful. You could see it on his face and on his battered body, but he never complained. It, re it reminded me of a passage written by the prophet Isaiah. He was painfully abused, but he did not complain. He was silent as a lamb led to the butcher quiet as a sheep having its wool cut off. Others thought he was a sinner, but he suffered for our sins and asked God to forgive us. Jesus hung suspended on that cross between heaven and us. It was as if he was making a bridge to God just for me.
I was there. I am Jesus. In the midst of my prayers in the Garden of Gethsemane, I was arrested unlawfully. I was tried unjustly. And I was found guilty. And they spit upon me. And they slapped me. And they mocked me. And after being held prisoner for some time, they took me to Pilate. And Pilate, not knowing what to do with me, took me to Herod. And Herod, frustrated and angry because I would not perform any miracles for his pleasure, sent me back with my false accusers to Pilate. And Pilate, in hopes of satisfying the angry mob, ordered me scourged. And so they took me and they stripped me. And they beat me. And they beat me almost to the point of death. My skin was shredded. My body was broken. My muscles were torn. Blood flowed all over my body. And the soldiers took me back to the fortress. And they put a purple robe on me and placed a crown of thorns upon my head. And then they began to mock me and pretended to worship me, saying, Hey, you, king of the Jews. And then they took a stick and they beat me and they beat me and they beat me and and blow after blow broke me even more. And they took me back to Pilate. And Pilate presented me to the people hoping their anger satisfied, but but they said, crucify him. So Pilate gave the order, my execution. And I was made to carry the very instrument of my execution, a cross, to the very place of my death. But my body so badly broken, I couldn't carry the cross all the way up the hill to Golgotha. So the Roman soldiers compelled Simon to carry the cross for me. And when we got to the top of the hill, my hands were pierced, my feet were pierced, and my cross was strung up, and I was made to hang there between heaven and earth. Until... I breathed my last breath. It was my back that bore the stripes. It was my brow that that bore the crown. It was my hands and my feet that were pierced. It was my cross that I carried up the hill. And it was me that was strung up between heaven and earth. Until at last, I breathed my last breath. I gave my life for humanity. But humanity saw it only as punishment from God. The punishment that was for you, my Father placed on me. And because of my brokenness, because of my life, I've made you well. My blood was shed so yours didn't have to be. My Father decided to place the punishment of you on me. All you have been like sheep who have gone astray. Each of you has turned to your own way. And my Father has laid on me the iniquity of you all. And as a lamb is led to the slaughter and a sheep before the shears is silent, so I did not open my mouth. Were you there? No. You were not. But I was. And I was there for you.
was not there, but something on that cross belonged to me. No one could see it, but the scripture tells us it was there. My sin was there. All the sin I have ever committed or will commit was placed upon Christ. Not only did he take my sin, but he received the punishment for it too. Now I can be free. Jesus is my savior, redeemer, friend. One can only imagine what Jesus was thinking as he hung on that cross. I wonder if he was thinking of me.
want to leave you with a scripture this evening. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. I have to believe this evening that at least a part of the joy that was before Christ, that gave him the strength to endure the cross, was the assurance that people like you and I would place our faith in him and have a loving relationship with his and our Heavenly Father. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this evening that the cross was not enough to deter Jesus. But, Father, because of the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Yes, despising the shame, but he endured the cross. And, Father, tonight I hope and pray we're a part of the joy that took him there, kept him there, and led him to be seated at the right hand of your throne. Father, as we journey together with you through this holy week, remembering and reflecting, may our heart be soft and sensitive to yours. And may we share the Christ that fills our hearts with all those we see in this community, and then in this world. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, church.